Good morning. Can you tell what kind of car I'm in just from the little bit of it that you see? I know you're still hazy because it's Monday morning and you're still hanging around the hotel in Rosemont, Illinois. Last night, you were up till four in the morning watching a twink from Baltimore perform auto filetio. It was super hot until he vomited mango truly after choking on his own dick. So, I know you got some time to kill before your flight back to SeaTac. So do yourself a favor, click the link in the description to find out when we're giving away this mystery car. Oh, it's 2003 and here comes the rich kid. All right. There it climbs at the end. Gets its second wind, and there it shifts. Yeah, it shifts. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. Is that us or someone else? Uh, I don't know. That might be us. Is that the? Has anybody ever just laid into it like that in a while? Do um, you do that? I do occasionally, but I, I don't really smell that. It's probably the Kia in front of us then. Go home, you polo shirt wearing clueless, sheltered, loud laughing, name dropping, Amex card waving, clean Timberland, east side symbol flashing, sophomore from Villanova or Temple or UPenn or even Lehigh. I've seen thousands of rich kids like you coming to Kutztown University, my school, to slum it. And all of you drove these things in the 2000s. All of you drove IS-300s. Every single untanned, sweet-smelling, pink nipples. I've seen you with your shirts off in December weather. Rudolph the Red Nose suck me, their ball sacks too tight, and when they get hard, their nuts suck up on either side of their taint. But they wouldn't experiment with me because I'm some hick from a farm school. Don't hate, Kutztown U produces better designers and artists than UPenn, and we're out here in the sticks. So, you think that means you could just roll up on Main Street and cruise back down Noble Street in your Lexus with your clear taillights, and that's going to impress us. Yo, where's the cliffs? You're on the wrong side of town. You're asking where the cliffs are. Yeah, you're going to go to a party at the cliffs. I hope a woman's rugby player throws you out on your designer jeaned ass. I have a history with this car. There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. Being rich demands attention. It means having the nicest car of its time and wearing the fanciest clothes and eating the best cut of a cow's backside. But wealth doesn't crave a spotlight because wealth doesn't generally concern itself with wealth disappearing. Whereas every little kid with these IS 300s know full well that all their money isn't theirs and it could disappear at any time. Wealth operates from behind a velvet rope, separating itself from others. But on a long enough timeline, wealth loops right back around to the kind of rich most people can't even fathom. That's the fly into space and mess with stock values by tweeting rich. In 2003, the Lexus IS300 sat comfortably in the middle of that nexus, providing the opportunity to flex without being called a show off initially. But because this has the good engine, showing off was always one torque load away. A Lexus IS300 was pretty damn nice for a new car. It doesn't quite demand tension, or at least it didn't when it was new. But it also sure doesn't want to be overlooked, even if it lags behind the 7 Series in comfort and acceleration, which kind of undermines the initial idea behind this car, which was to create something that would blend luxury and performance in a way that compromised neither. You can't do half measures in the sports luxury department or you end up disappointing people worse than a statey who pops up doing five over. Are you sure you're not in the military? Because you're being a petty officer. The engine is the two 
J Z G. I mean, it's the two J. It's the two J. It's the blessed. It's the blessed two J. It's the super engine. It's the engine that gets anime girls, gets them to be real, and and they all have huge dicks. Put your spank sock down, Russell. This is the two J Z G E, not the G T E. No turbo here. This is a naturally aspirated. Three liter inline six, making between 215 to 230 horsepower from factory and between 218 and 220 pound feet. It's an engine that offered 22 extra horsepower over the BMW 320i. And it was an engine for a car that was born under the watchful eye of the same engineer who gave us the Mark IV Supra. This launched in Japan in 1998 as the Toyota Alteza. And with that name, came a word for what these taillights are. The goal of the car was to compete, of course, with BMW again and Mercedes-Benz. In a way, the first generation IS300 felt like a seating operation. Like they were trying to figure out a car whose primary function was to further the Lexus profile in North America and Europe. Of course, by this time, the LS400 was firmly established. When the IS300 launched as the Alteza in Japan, Lexus had only been around for nine years. Granted, nine years was how long it took between Tesla being founded and becoming a brand name that Uncle Joe learned that he had to hate. Even then, you could argue the Model S projected the same aura of exclusion to the point that even people interested didn't seem to know what to make of it. Now, the IS300 struggled a bit in North America, topping out at only 22,486 units in 2001 and closing out the first generation below 10,000. This is stock. Wait, what's up with these headers? Are these stock headers? I'll get back to you. And it's a, and in pretty good condition, even if Liam's original IS300 wasn't. Yes, this is Liam's second IS300. The original car was purchased new by Liam's grandmother and then given to him many years later. In its lifetime, the car suffered a series of accidents like being rear-ended by a semi and getting the K-frame bent on a bad turn of ice. And the car was finally put out to pasture when a relative totaled it by backing out of the driveway while he was away at college. And so the family nixed their vacation plans to get Liam a replacement of the exact same car. This model was purchased last year at 199,000 miles, and it now has roughly 220,000 miles on it. It's been driven all over the Northeast and some of the Midwest without any real issues whatsoever. And it speaks to its value as a road trip car and to the wise governance of Yarl Toyota. It's reasonably fast and moderately comfortable and has a decent fuel economy. Now, okay, good mile per gallon, eh, 18 mile per gallon, you know, out of the city, maybe 16 city, 23 highway. All right, it's not fantastic. But you know, it's one thing to have a car that's kind of thirsty, but doesn't have any problems, as opposed to a thrifty car that breaks all the time. Wait, are these Dorman OEM style headers? Do the stock headers have, are the stock headers supposed to have webbing in between, in between the tubing? Toyota is so hard to pin down sometimes. No, wait. Liam confirmed that the tubular style headers are Toyota OEM. Okay. No longer confused. In an idealistic way, we want to believe that the business of automotive design operates under campground rules. You leave it better than you found it. But it often depends on what constitutes better. Broad, rounded cars that sit low and rev high might be appealing, but there's something to be said for an approach that finds a way to offer performance without slamming angry headlights and polygons all over everything. In that way, the IS300 feels like a modern car without all the design baggage, presuming you don't already love the look of today's cars and presuming that looks matter to you more than performance. Some people love a beater loaded with candy wrappers and cigarette ash that'll blow a sport racer out of the water, which is totally okay. I love LS swaps. This isn't room raiders. You don't let someone in just so they can judge you. But by the same token, the IS300 was a car for the casual flex. Those rich kids didn't cat flex casual at so Anyway. <laughs> In its heyday, this was a Lexus for someone on their way to the top. People who own these in 2003 now have sons investing their summer earnings in crypto, rocking LED rims that display animated ice cream cones, chrome fender vents, and a Pepe the Frog vinyl on the hood. 
Looking like a rolling HR violation. Probably has a hustle and grind decal on the sides and a salt life on the back glass. They ride their clutch all the way down until the screws grind. And the engine is deader than a Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. It's a car that, despite being a luxury offering, drives like any other good Toyota. So the markup then has to come from perception. And the willingness to indulge that perception determines where on the rich wealth spectrum you land. If being rich creates a personality to accommodate it, then wealth gives the freedom to drop the mask every once in a while. So, should you buy an IS300 today? Well, don't expect Supra speed. An IS300 will get its second win at 80 miles an hour, just like a BMW 7 Series, but it takes a hot minute to wind up. Yes, it's a 2J, but there's no turbo here. And the manual mode is useless. Doesn't make you faster, but this does the same job as a BMW 7 Series. Once it's up to speed, this is a long Pennsylvania Turnpike Bomber. It's the thing for that one. F this is something I, I, I heard when I was in college that there, there was this one frat initiation that said that any, at any moment a brother was going to ask you, he was going to call you up and say, I'm hungry for a cheesesteak and I want one from Pat's or Gino's right now. And that meant you had to drive all the way to Philly, go get a cheesesteak, and come all the way back, and that thing better be hot. And it was usually going to be like a super late night run. So if you had a car like this, that could just sit at 100 miles an hour, you could get to Philly in under an hour. Ooh, but that was in the early 2000s before the turnpike was 70 miles an hour. But an IS300 would do that. It's a mid-size car that's stable at speed like a full-size luxury sedan. But most people treated these things as like little street racing machines. And from the casual observer, they influence car culture more from their taillights than they did from their engineering. And I'm not going to spin the tires or drift it because you can go watch all the other videos of IS300 spinning around like children trying to get the adults to pay attention. I got an IS300. Look how fast I can run. Look how fast I can run. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. You're not watching. I bought an IS300 and no one is looking at me. Look at my dash. It looks like a watch. It looks like an expensive watch. <sighs> I'm going back to Philly. You K-Town hicks are poor.